Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today's first story is, you don't need to stick to a contract because you're my mother? Good luck with that. This happened roughly 5 years ago, just after I turned 18. My mother was running a small art supply shop in the small farming community I grew up in. She took this shop over after the original owners went bankrupt and sold it off. She was doing a pretty good job. Both of my parents are pretty business minded and would make amazing business partners if they could stand being in the same room together longer than 30 minutes. Just making a few silly choices here and there and she got us kids to help out quite often. One visit during the Christmas holidays, I had come up from my dad's to stay for about a month and my mother had the amazing idea to teach the three kids, me just turned 18, brother 16, stepsister 8, about having a real job and printed up contracts for us to become employees under her. For my brother and sister, these were not worth the paper they were written on, as they were under 18. But because I was 18, it would have been legally binding. This wasn't her intention at all, but I wasn't willing to take the risk, so I filled it out with complete BS. Putting my name down as Elvis, saying I had jail time, drawing a cat as a signature, etc. She went nuts at me. I was apparently being disrespectful and childish, and when I tried to explain myself, I was told to shut up and not talk back to her. The convo would go, word for word, Mom. How could you do this? Why would you do something so stupid? Me, because I'm… Mom, shut up, I'm still talking. After this, it was dropped, and everyone carried on working like normal. Then I started to notice small and stupid things mom would yell at the kids for. They come in from lunch 5 minutes late, they're in breach of contract. A friend comes in and talks to them for 2 minutes, they're in breach of contract. They want to go to the movies with friends and have a proper holiday for a day? You're in breach of contract. This is when I decided to read the contract. I didn't before as I had no intention of signing it and it was ridiculous. Pay was minimum wage, travel cost plus food cost and came out to like 5 New Zealand dollars a week. No days off unless you were seriously sick, 30 minute lunch break in an 8 hour day, no personal communication during work hours, no food or drink while working, arriving late and leaving early would be penalized and these were the worst ones I can remember. I decided this was total BS and I needed to teach her something. So, using my limited legal knowledge from my IT degree, I rewrote the contract. Minimum wage with travel reimbursed. Paid day off for something as little as a cold. One hour lunch break. Personal conversation allowed as long as I'm working at the same time. Leaving and arriving 20 minutes late or early caused no penalty. Also, due to my IT qualification, any hour I do any IT related work gained double pay, even if it was just for 5 minutes. Contract became void after 2 weeks. I was due to go home in 3. I took this new contract to my mom at the end of the week. Me. Mom, I'm sorry for being a pain about the contract, so I read through it, corrected some mistakes I could see and signed it for you. Mom. Oh, thank you. I'll get that signed immediately and it will start on Monday. To my brother and sister. See, this is good to learn. I purposefully left some mistakes for you to find, but neither of you read your contracts. Always read your contract carefully. Sure enough, she signed it without reading it, gave me a copy and I was employed for a few weeks. When it came about time to hand in our hours and get paid, my brother and sister went first, got their $5 and were happy. When my turn came, I handed over a notebook with my detailed notes on every task I did, how long it took, and at the end, a bill for about $300. I had done a lot of IT work and overtime to fix her work computer and handed my $5. Me, this looks a bit light. Mom, no, you get $5, because she goes through the rundown of the old contract's billing. Me, yes, but that's their contract, not mine. Check the notebook and contract. Mom. Checks notebook, getting gradually more peeved off. I am not paying you this. This is ridiculous. Me. But you signed the contract. You agreed to it. Hands her a copy of the signed contract. She reads the contract, then refuses to pay it, as she's my mother and this is stupid, and rips it up, then leaving with my siblings, leaving me to make my own way home. Since I've rambled on for a bit, I'll make the next bit short. I got a ride home, in a cop car. I asked a favor at the station, since I wanted my mother to learn a lesson but I didn't want to go to court or anything. She was told that the law is on my side, me and my mother are both over 18 and the contract is legally binding. She can either pay me the $300 or I can take her to court over refusing to pay an employee. I got the $300. We didn't speak for over a year. My dad and Nana laughed with me when I told them. Moral of the story, always read a contract before signing it. Edit. A few things I probably mentioned but didn't cross my mind when I wrote it. The cop I got a ride home with was a good friend's dad. I didn't go to the station and complain, just asked for a ride and a scare from my mother. My mother is extremely two-faced. If you only know her through her work, then she acts like your best friend. 
If you know her personally, you know she's a real work of art. The second story is, count my work hours at the end of the month? All right. I, 23 female, decided to take a year off university to earn some money and have some fun before my last year as a student. I found a job in retail fairly easy, as I've worked in stores ever since I was old enough to work. My boss was thrilled to find someone with experience who could help improve her small store. My job was great at first, despite everything in the store needing to be done manually. We have to write receipts down by hand, make a list of articles in the store every month. We didn't even have a clear schedule of work. The boss would just call us and ask us if we could work the next day. My coworker and I weren't bothered about any of it, except the schedule. She's going to university this year, and not knowing when she works is seriously messing up her progress in class. Our boss would also get really upset and mad whenever we told her we couldn't work the next day, due to other plans. A few weeks into the job, I decided to fix that. I made her a spreadsheet which she could use to plan our work hours, like in any other company I ever worked for, in advance. We also gave her our schedules three weeks in advance, so she could build and plan around it. Her response? This doesn't work for me. What if something comes in between and the person who's supposed to work doesn't show? I tried to explain that if that were to occur, the other will just try to show up, but she was having none of it, insisting that us learning whether we worked or not the next day was just fine. It wasn't, but okay. I didn't want my work to go to waste, so I altered the sheet to work as something that counts our monthly hours at work, since that also had to be done by hand, and it was unnecessary time wasted. I'm sure most of us keep track of hours spent at work just in case. I tried improving some other things in the store, like building a database for articles we have, so we wouldn't have to hand count everything every month or every time she had to order something new. She sternly told me to delete everything I did because she doesn't like the look of it. Side note, this is kind of biting her in the butt right now because some providers are now giving her smack about the way she reports items sold at the end of each month. That database she made me delete and the way it generated the list of items in storage is exactly what they want from her from now on. Skip to a few days ago. A few months into the job and I'm tired of her attitude. I try to help her improve the store, show motivation, present my ideas and she shuts everything down and we stay in the same cycle of work that wouldn't be needed if she'd just take up some of my ideas. My coworker already quit. She's not in the store purely for emergencies until a replacement is found. My boss comes into the store and tells me it's payday. Sweet. She usually wants us to count the hours by ourselves and then compare with what she counted but apparently she was in a bad mood that particular day and wanted me to go through everything again. Boss, we have to go over your hours for the previous month. I'd like you to count them now and tell me how many you had. Me, okay, I already have them counted, so you can just tell me how many you got and we can check if it matches with mine. I pulled up the sheet, which both coworker and I update daily, so we don't have to do this at the end of each month. She apparently didn't like that response since she loves doing everything by hand so much. She came barreling from her office and into the store yelling at me how I shouldn't be checking the spreadsheet in my hour count and that I have to delete it from the computer immediately and to never try one of my improvements ever again. I, having been tired of her SH, just raised my eyebrows and did exactly as she said. I deleted the spreadsheet. Boss now satisfied. Good, now I would like you to count and report the hours you worked last month. All right, I pulled my phone out and showed her the exact same spreadsheet, except this one also calculated how much I should be getting paid for my time. I counted X hours, which means I should be getting paid Y euros. She was absolutely livid with me. She was banging and throwing things in her office before she came back and handed me my hard-earned cash. Bonus, that was also the day I decided I no longer wanted to work for her due to her abusive behavior to both me and my coworker. I informed her of my decision the next day and now she has to find two replacements. I take some pity on her and jump in when she really needs someone but am otherwise free from her clutches. The last story is, my mom maliciously respects her subcontractor's wish. Obligatory English is my second language. I apologize in advance for any errors or grammatical awkwardness. This also turned out much longer than expected. Oops. This is a fresh story stolen from my mom. Of course, it's fresh for me because I just heard it. But for her, it's been slowly brewing for long, long months. For the backstory, my mom works as a construction specialist for a rather tiny construction and real estate development company. It consists of less than 10 people, and that's including the owner, the cleaning lady, the owner's assistant, and an accountant. The amount of work they do construction-wise is astounding, but they don't hire any crew. They only get subcontracted until the project is finished. She creates detailed cost estimates, files tender offers for public projects, hires subcontractors, participates in bids, the list goes on. She has made everything work smoothly. Since my dad and her ex-husband hecked off decades ago, and she never had anyone to help around the house, she often offered some small-time jobs to her subcontractors. Broken window, the door needs fixing, faulty plumbing? No need for any pesky, crappy husband. One of the hired crew guys will be happy to help after work for a fair, regular customer rate, 
plus some home-cooked dinner, coffee, and work-related gossip. Since construction isn't a very stable business around here, and the projects ended sooner or later, there was a considerable rotation of these guys at our home over the years. The episode leading to malicious compliance started about two years ago. One of the regular guys who ran a small construction business, let's call him Ben, was at the time contracted with my mom's company to install doors and windows. Around that time, my mom's front door pretty much broke apart after circa 20 years of faithful service. My mother grabbed her phone, called Ben, and asked him if any of his guys got a few hours for a side job, a new door, door frame, and installation. He agreed to help and sent two blokes over. They finished the job, took the payment, drank some coffee, chatted with my mom a bit and left. Everything seemed fine at first, but a few days after the installation, my mom noticed her new front door doesn't fully close, and the lock tends to jam. She called Ben, explained what the issue was, and asked him to send someone around, and that she will pay for their time. He abruptly said, I'm busy, we got a ton of projects, don't bother me with stupid SH, and disconnected. Okay then, I won't, she thought. She never brought the issue up again. She fully understood how incredibly busy this man must be. So many projects, so little time. The next construction project started for her company. She remembered the poor, overworked, busy Ben, so she hired a different company for the installation of doors and windows. And for the next project, and another one, and the following one, and the one after that too. About a month ago, she got a call from a familiar number while at work. Hello, company name, Hannah Malicious speaking. Oh, hello, good afternoon, Mrs. Hannah, how are you doing? I know it sounds a bit weird, but we use a Mr. or Mrs. title in the first name when someone is familiar in a professional setting, like a coworker, but not exactly someone personally close. I kept it so that Eastern European aesthetic doesn't fully die in translation. I'm sorry, who am I speaking to? It's Ben, Mrs. Hannah. How are you doing? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Ben. I'm fine, thank you for asking. How are you? Well, not that good. I just noticed that we haven't gotten any construction contract offers from you. Is everything okay? Everything's fine. We've just handed in two construction sites and we have a new one fully prepared for this spring. Why do you ask? We submitted offers for our services for the past few months, but we've never heard anything back. Right, do you remember our last conversation, sir? Uh, not really, no. You guys messed up my door installation. I asked you for some help, Mr. Ben. I was willing to pay you extra despite for the fact that I shouldn't even pay you for fixing your staff's mistakes, but I respected our long cooperation. Do you remember what you said, sir? Uh... Sir, you said you're busy and you don't have time for stupid SH. Now, I really do respect people's time and I certainly don't want to bother them with stupid SH, especially when they're busy. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hannah. This must be a misunderstanding. I'll send someone to fix your door right away. It's been fixed by someone else two years ago. Goodbye, Mr. Ben. I just spoke with my mom over Skype. I noticed that there's a huge fancy flower bouquet behind her. Oh, flowers? Are they from a guy? Please tell me you're finally dating someone. She smiled a bit nastily. This thing? They're from Mr. Ben. And then she told me this whole story, which unbeknownst to me has been slow cooking over the last two years. Mom, does it mean you're going to hire his company again? Nah, he's busy. I don't want to bother him with stupid SH. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.